Okay, go ahead and read. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, uh -huh. now no more to return to corruption. Now he said, and raised him up to the dead, now no more to return to corruption. In other words, you know, he got this eternal body now. And it cannot die. Neither can it decompose or any of that. Now no more to return to corruption. Go ahead and read on. He said on this wise, uh -huh. I will give you the sure mercies of David. Go ahead. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, uh -huh. Thou should not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Go ahead. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep uh -huh. and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Go ahead. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Uh -huh. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. See what I said? He who God raised up, he saw no corruption. And be it known unto you that through this man is preached the forgiveness of sin. Sins are forgiven through this man here. Now, let's go show you what you got to do if you want your sin forgiven you. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 36. Acts chapter 2, and we began reading at verse 36, 2 and 36. So you got to do the same thing. If you, if, if, if you want to become what he has become, then you got to do the same thing. Acts 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 36. 2 and 36. 2 and 36. Okay, go ahead and read it. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Now, the same thing that he's saying to the house of Israel, he said it to the uh, Gentiles as well. All you got to do is go uh, read Acts chapter 10. It'll tell you the very same thing that he's saying to the house of Israel. Go ahead and read. That God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Go ahead and read. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart uh -huh. and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Go ahead. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Uh -huh. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, Jesus didn't need to repent, but Jesus got baptized, didn't he? Yeah. And when he got baptized, didn't he receive the Holy Spirit? So the same thing he did, the same thing you got to do. Let me, let's show you another thing, too. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 3 now and begin reading at verse 23. This is what else you got to do. Romans 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 23. 3 and 23. Now, Jesus got baptized. Then he received the Holy Ghost because it is something about that Holy Ghost. If you're going to get immortality, you got to have it. And I ain't talking about that, 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 that stuff that they call Holy Ghost. Either. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> okay. Let's not confuse them. Sure. Okay. There's a Bible Holy Ghost, and then there's something else that they call the Holy Ghost. I can't say Holy Ghost because it ain't that. No, sir. So I'll just say something else that they call the Holy Ghost. Sir. But Jesus showed the way. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus, John said, you don't need to be baptized. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. But thus in us shall all righteousness be fulfilled. Now, he did it. He received the Holy Ghost. If you're going to receive the Holy Ghost, then you got to do it too. But the difference is you got to do it in his name. You first got to repent and then do it in his name because only through his name is there forgiveness of sin. Let's start reading here at... Uh, Let's start reading here at Romans 3 and began reading at verse 23. 3 and 23. Now you repent it. Now you wait for the Holy Spirit. Start reading at verse 23. Go ahead and read. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Go ahead and read. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Go ahead. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Now, he, he said being justified. Yeah, he told you first everybody's guilty. Then he turned around and told you justified, meaning to be clear of guilt. And that can only be done through his redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And that is meaning his blood. That is why he had to die so that our sins could be forgiven us. Go ahead and read on. Verse 26. Go ahead and read. To declare, I say, 
at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now, that he might be just, and a justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. You know what this is telling you? That there is something you got to do. You understand what I'm saying? He already told you you got to repent and be baptized for the remission of sin, didn't he? Now he's telling you that you might be justified through the forbearance of God. Now he's going to tell you what else it is that you're going to have to do. Skip down to verse 29 and continue reading. Go ahead and read it, brother. Is he the God of the Jews only? Uh -huh. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Everybody's God. Go ahead and read. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith uh -huh. and uncircumcision through faith. Now what's the circumcision? That is the Jews who are the uncircumcision. That is everybody else. And they are all justified by faith. Clear the guilt by faith. By faith in what? By faith in the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and read on. Do we then make void the law through faith? Now, what, you know, everybody would like to believe that once you come under the blood of Jesus, you ain't got to keep no law. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul asked the question, do we make void the law through faith? You know what, void? Do away with cancel out. Everybody tell you he did. You know, once Jesus came and died and I get baptized in his name, then I ain't got to do nothing no more but believe. But listen at, what the, listen at the answer here. Do we make void the law through faith? Go ahead and read. God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead and read. Yea, we establish the law. Yea, we establish the law. Meaning you got in trouble because you broke it. Jesus came and died and got you out of trouble. Now to make sure you don't get back in trouble, you got to keep the law. That makes sense, don't it? Yes, sir. That stuff about you ain't got to keep no law once you come in the blood of Jesus, that ain't never made no sense. What was the reason of you getting repentant and being baptized in the first place? For forgiveness of sin because you broke the law. Now you're going to let somebody tell you that it is all right for you to go back and do the stuff that got you in trouble in the first place. <laughs> Sir. You wouldn't dare listen to nobody if they told you that man. Somebody told you, you just got bonded out of jail because you was a, a thief. And you're going to let somebody tell you, man, you can go back and start stealing all over again and you ain't going back to jail. You wouldn't believe that, would you? Sir. I ain't saying you ain't going to go back and steal, but you know if you get caught, you're going back to jail. Sir. But you wouldn't let somebody tell you that, you know, Jesus came and died and got you out of trouble because you broke the law. Now you don't have to keep the law anymore. And everything going to be fine. Don't go for that. You got to know <laughs> there's something wrong with that. I mean, just common sense tell you something wrong with that. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 John chapter 1, the gospel of John. John chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. John 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. 1 and 1. 1 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. In the beginning was the Word, uh -huh. and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Now, there are two here. I made mention of it earlier, and we know who both of them are. One is the one that became known as the Father. Other is the one that became known as the Son. The Word that became known as uh, Jesus, he was there in the beginning. That's why God said, let us make man in our image and our Us automatically implying more than one. How many was it? It was two. The one that became known as the Father and the one that became known as the Son. Go ahead, read on. The same was in the beginning with God. Go ahead. All things were made by him, uh -huh. and without him was not anything made that was made. He said all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Skip down now to uh, verse 10. Go ahead, read. He was in the world, uh -huh. and the world was made by him, Go ahead. and the world knew him not. Go ahead and read. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Now, you know, his own, well, that was Israel, and they rejected him. In fact, they was the one that begged Pilate to put him to death. So now he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Go ahead and read on. But as many as received him. But as many as did receive him.